Hi guys, this is KJ Podcast. Joining me with K, um, Kai Gamma and Christian Lalage. We have in the super, super special guest in the studio where he lives in the local area of Kensal House, north of the Kensington Borough, which is Ryan. So yeah, to give Ryan his proper introduction, it is Ryan Dalton, and Ryan is, uh, uh, I mean, he's a local resident, but also has done very a lot of stuff in the area uh, with young people and, and lots of different other stuff. So hopefully we'll get into some of that, won't we? Hopefully, of course. So Ryan, welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thanks getting welcome me, uh, Thanks for welcoming me on the show today. Yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure having you as well, and... Um, what a journey that we've been having, man. <laughs> Indeed. Literally. Like, first episode and the second I released, and then after that, deleted it. Now I want to start fresh. Now we're here. Now we're going to start proper. And now, yeah, it's going great now. Yeah, excellent stuff. Excellent yeah. stuff. I'm, I'm honoured to be one of your first proper guests on the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Indeed. So, yeah, getting into it. What what what, what we got... Lined up to ask Ryan. So the lineups is that we have him joining Seb's Sebo's uh, Lemonade, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, um, I've been uh, supporting um, uh, some uh, residents um, from Kensal House on their uh, sort of entrepreneurial journey. Uh, so right. on their entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey um, in relation to sort of like businesses that they've been setting up locally, um, and I think. Um, you know, not any carnival is obviously happening this weekend, and I oh think it's yeah. a great, great t time for them to sort of like release their sort of new ventures and products into the community. And yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good vibe so far. So mm. yeah. I mean, carnival is just right, right around the corner though, and you're well going to be tomorrow. getting it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> yeah, yeah, tomorrow at the time already, of recording. Already. Oh my god, it's going so quick, man! Literally, mm -hmm. oh my god, um, carnival days. You're going to get a lot of people. Um, so, so it's going to be you, Sebastiano and his brothers. Mm -hmm. How do you think it will be when you're selling the products? Uh, so I think a lot of people have already had the opportunity to sort of taste the lemonade and, 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 you know, it's kind of already popular around sort of the Port of, Port of Ella Road and, 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 and those sides. So I think, um, the, the sort of client base is already there, you know, and I think, it's just um, there's been a lot of support for Spaciano's Lemonade um, as a new business in the in the area uh, leading up to Carnival. Okay. So I think obviously it's just a, a really really good time for it to be sort of out there. You know, people are sort of like familiar with it from uh, previous launches at like Chili's on Portobello Road. There was like some really good club nights there. Um, so yeah, it's really yeah, just a really exciting time, and I think um, people are gonna really enjoy enjoy the product. Fantastic. Already, so. Fantastic. I wanted to just um, quickly ask you though, Ryan, mm -hmm. before the Sebastiano and the lemonade and stuff like that, can we go right back to the beginning of, of course, like yeah, you yeah. in the area? Like, yeah. Uh, so, y y were you born and raised in the area? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I yeah, lived, lived locally all my life. Yeah, definitely. I've um, lived all, all my life in the local area. Big fan of sort of like Labrador Grove and Portobello. That's sort of definitely my home. But, uh, yeah. And what school did you go to there? Uh, so, I actually went to Quinton Kinniston. Um, in St John's Wood and then uh, Holland, Holland Park 6th form hey Holland Park local. <laughs> shout them out Holland Park <laughs> if any students at Holland Park knows then give me a shout you know <laughs> DM me if you want so Stop were you me. you both at Kins at the at the, at the same time Oh, no, I think uh, I was no, before yeah, before Chris. yeah literally my, my year was a little bit you know crazy at that time but I don't know how your year was can you tell me about that? Uh, yeah, my it was good. It was good. Um, I think we spent a lot of time in. If you know, you know. Spent a lot of time in Fort Lodge. Um, so yeah, um, it was yeah, it was a good time. It was a very good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me in Holland Park, what was your best hotspot? I would say. Uh, like I said, you know, we spent most of our time in Fort Lodge. Um, but to be honest, I think, obviously, as you know, like, obviously, sixth form was good because you had a lot of free periods. So, 
obviously you could like go to where you wanted to go. Um, so I spent a lot of time, like I said, around Portobello. Mm. The ends, um, definitely Dabra Grove. Um, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean, because like sixth form, uh, they always wear like uh, like suits or like you know. No, not when I was there, man. I mean, there was no uniform when I was there. Really? Yeah. Cause, oh my god, <laughs> when I was there, yeah, sixth literally. Form, sixth form was uh, your own, your own, your own, your own clothes. So yeah. Lucky you, man. I well, if there was a uniform, I wasn't wearing it. <laughs> oh my god! Trust me, my year we had to wear uniform, even if it was a hot day. Even we still had to wear it, man. Literally, tie, blazer, and then um, what, the, what were they called again? Uh, little um, oh, cardigans. Okay. Yeah, those cardigans were ah, <laughs> mm, oh, they were a little bit of an annoying one. Once you take it off, the teachers say like, "Uh, where are you going? You need to put your cardigan back on again." Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like telling them like, oh, miss, yeah, it's it's hot. It's a hot day, miss, you know? i got to take it off. Yeah, no stick, excuses. Stickler for, stickler for the rules, but still, overall, a very good school. So. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any, um, just incidentally, because uh, we have tried to, um, on the podcast so far, Yeah. we've tried to ask uh, about people's memories of the area as well. Oh, Have you yeah. got any good memories of going to Holland Park School? Uh, yeah, of course. Like like I said, I've said a few times now. Like obviously, it's a very good school. But I think for me, like obviously, the best memories were like summer. You know, like obviously, like the people that you met, like your your mates and that. Like just yeah, it's all, always around Kensington or mm, Labrock Road, yeah. Notting Hill, Holland Park. Those areas are just sort of they were just like, they were just there. They were yeah. awesome. A few good a few good hotspots and stuff like. I think I've spent probably like the best part of a decade now going to Port Better Juices. <laughs> Shout out to the <laughs> pastor and the crew. <laughs> nice. So yeah, that's one of my favourite um, locations to go. Cause, um, yeah, good smoothies. Yeah, good juices. <laughs> yeah, best place to go in Port Better, I think. All right, all right. Um, so after like you graduated, like have you still have any contact with the uh, people that uh, you yeah yeah i know quite uh, yeah of course know quite a, a, a few of them i know um some have gone on to have like local businesses in the area so um, uh-huh. there's a few like family run like moroccan shops on golden roads okay um, yeah wow and if you have gone into the sort of like restaurant game um, and yeah a couple of them have come on to gone on to be sort of like uh, local advocates for sort of yeah well, community councillors and stuff like that. So I think yeah, a lot of people are taking a stand in on in fighting sort of injustices. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Um, moving on to the local history about your life, um, creating a football academy. Yeah, yeah, right? so yeah, yeah. Um, so can you, uh, um, can you describe what was the importance of creating the football academy? Yeah, so I think sort of. Um, I think one of the one of the main reasons behind the football academy was uh, sort of in conjunction with obviously the council. I think it was became quite evident. Sort of, I'd say 2014, 2015, um, through like mass surveys and stuff of what was important to local residents. And I think one of the biggest, or well, two of the biggest factors, was obviously sort of antisocial behaviour and lack of opportunities for young people. And I think mm. also increasing like the footfall in the in the local park. Okay. Um, so I think we've been able to sort of, you know tackle both of those issues <laughs> by sort of producing um uh, sort of yeah so sort of producing the football academy but also it's given the opportunity to sort of bring other like organizations and projects together so you know this is like a step the football academy is basically like a stepping stone for younger people and obviously we work very closely with qpr um, you know, and if they if they happen to get scouted and, and and go go far that's great a lot of them have been obviously footballers and then gone on to become coaches. You know, there's there definitely ample opportunity for them to sort of uh, excel in different areas in, in terms of football. But now it's not just football. You know, over the years it's progressed and it's become a sports academy. So we work very closely with the LTA for tennis. You know, the London Basketball Association, which is literally just opposite Kensal House across the road. Oh. You know, we work very closely with them in terms of delivering sort of a multitude of, of, of basketball activities around the area. So, yeah, brilliant organisations to work with. Awesome, and how how long have you has it been going? Uh, so it launched in April twenty sixteen, um, and it's just got yeah, it's just got bigger and better and stronger from there. And yeah, like I said, it's literally collaborative efforts now. You know, everyone from everyone active to QPR, you know, even bringing in sponsorship. So we've worked with Wilmot Dixon at the start. Um, we've worked with local gyms, Virgin Active. Like it's just become 
it's gone from being local to sort of spreading out, you know, and, and, and gaining a lot of traction and a lot of support from um, the likes of estate agents. Yeah, it's, 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 it's sounds fantastic. fantastic. And uh, and just uh, what what kind of age groups um, does it cover? Yeah, so QPG uh, for all the sports is from five years plus. Um, and I'd say sort of like our oldest football teams, obviously like up to about eighteen, so five to eighteen. Mm, that's awesome. and young people. That's great. Fantastic. Um, can you create a, a vision of your best moments of the football academy? Uh, so I think the best moments for me were probably pre-pandemic because obviously we were sort of forced to shut up shop during during lockdown and there was absolutely no football. So obviously that was really really difficult. Um, mm. I think a really hard time for for everyone, especially those that were sort of doing GCSEs and A levels at the time. Yeah. Um, so I think that was difficult. But I think pre-pandemic, I think we'd gone on to take part in a lot of tournaments so even local ones there was, okay. was the west london cup which the, the under 18s team went on to win so i think there was a lot of highs just before that february lockdown wow what an achievement man what an achievement that sounds fantastic well done congratulations thank you, thank on that. You, yeah. thank you. like i said it's a it's a, a massive team collaboration you know there's coaches and um, football coaches tennis coaches basketball coaches the, Masses of support from other organisations, from Active Westminster, everyone active, and Bren and KMC, and yeah, it's been it's, it's been a, a quite a journey. <laughs> Sounds like it. And um, and y- y- am I right in saying that you're now doing something with Spid Theatre as well? Uh, yes, yeah, so I've um, been supporting uh, Spid locally. I think sort of um, really passionate about the sort of uh, injustices around housing. Um, so I think that's been really really important to me. Especially since obviously the tragedy of, of Grenfell. Mm. So, yeah, Grenfell was a little bit of a disaster at that, m- that yeah, time. Obviously, a huge, huge disaster. Huge disaster. Huge, huge. 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 huge disaster. And I think, Good obviously, I think, you know, I, I've done quite a lot of volunteering over the years, you know, mm. um, with uh, Ackland Village and, and even Bay 20. And there's so many fantastic sort of groups that have uh, risen from, from, off the, from the back of that, that tragedy. And I think. It's, it's, it's important. I think these groups are there. Obviously, they're mainly to support people through su- such like things like Grenfell and the cost of living crisis and obviously COVID and the lockdown. And it's fantastic that they've been there. But I think they're also there as a reminder to for people, you know, to not lose that sort of that anger, you know, and that and that and that um, passion in in holding people accountable, not just the council. But I think, you know, um, even from back at back back in. Uh, time of Grenfell you know like the anger towards the Tory party and Theresa May I think like that there, there needs to be a, a reminder and I think people have got an ample opportunity I don't want to get political I yeah think people have got a really really good imp- opportunity next year mm. for, well I guess the next general election <laughs> it's fast approaching so I think people need to sort of step back and reflect and remind themselves you know what just what people have been put through in the last sort of I'd say I want to say like at least a decade yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah. Think in the end, I hope everyone, everyone, all the listeners and all the residents and everyone in London and the UK sort of, you know, remind themselves of what they've had, to, the hardships they've had to face over the last 10 years and, and use their vote next year. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Really good point. I mean, like, um, since the Grenfell tragedy, um, like, I know I haven't been doing that much, but um, there was this one group called uh, Kamani Arts. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah. There was this uh, young, uh, very lovely uh, woman called uh, Princess Emmanuel, and uh, she uh, told me that she would like to, like, you know, give me an opportunity to, like, you know, speak my uh, voice, uh, also to, like, you know, help out a little bit. But, you know, I really, really want to do something for them as well to, like, you know, get the rest of the young people and also um, some of the people that have been affected uh, by the fire. So I just want to give a very th- a special thanks to Princess Emmanuel for mm. giving me that opportunity. Yeah, com- uh, I think that Princess Emmanuel and the Kamani Arts Project, I think they're fantastic. I think very uh, lovely. I actually saw um, a piece in them, I think, on ITV News only yesterday. Mm. Um, and they've spent the last couple of months sort of, um, you know, designing all the costumes for Not Only Carnival that you'll see. And I think they're just, yeah, fantastic group and fantastic um, real family of... Um, of um, yeah, designers basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've got. I, I do remember Princess Emmanuel from back in the day, and and you're <laughs> right. She's a, a 
fantastic poet, yeah. but also uh, a very awesome, uh, amazing spirit. So uh, big up, Princess Emmanuel. Yeah, big her up, man, literally. Um, my only first moment, uh, best moment with her was with um, where we was in, um, where was it again? Um, in, uh, I think Holland Park, yeah. Uh, it was on the steps, and uh, it was on the steps of the opera, and... Um, yeah, it was amazing, literally so amazing. And uh, we had the deputy mayor over there as well. Wow. And it was it was a crazy. And uh, a lot of people were just moving from left to right, just random people. And uh, when I did my piece, um, I had the music with them as well. Big up to the musicians every, uh, every time, literally. They, they, they did an ama amazing job, literally. Um, but yeah, yeah, that moment was the best of me. So big up, big up. Yeah, big, big up. So, wh wh what else have you got there to ask R. Ryan? Ooh, uh, are you sure you want to know? Uh, yeah, please. We've got the uh, we've got Ryan here. Don't want right. to waste waste. I mean, the gentleman's time. Of course, of course. Um, so I guess that you've seen the women's and the men's football leagues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's like they're given. Uh, hopes and dreams to young people who can uh, achieve their targets and become a professional football player. So, uh, what advice would you give to a young uh, youth of the generation, of this generation, uh, if they want to uh, go towards their goals as a football player? Um, oof, uh, that's a good question. It's a really good question, actually. Um, I think um, just put the work in, put the effort in. I think, you know, everyone's got hopes and dreams and everyone wants to be successful and you know all that's entirely possible but it's really at the end of the day it comes down to how much work you put in yourself you know and i think you know find a club that you like you know mm. it doesn't have to necessarily be a local one but find a club that you like and you know um put the work in just put the effort in and i'm sure you know there's no there's, there's no well the possibility of endless really am i mm, mm. Yeah, i mean believe in yourself basically yeah believe yeah. in yourself Literally. put the work in yeah. um yeah and um, yeah, I think you'll go, I think the potential there's that is to go potential there to go far, you know. So yeah, and, and the timing as well. I mean, with the lionesses, yeah, getting man. to the the final of the World Cup just recently, yeah, it's really inspiring for for all young people. Back mm -hmm. in the day, it used to be just you know trying to encourage young boys to see that as a, as a pathway. And yeah. But now, you know, young girls, you see the skill level of, of the young girls. Uh, Bro, you know, literally. so it must be really inspiring. Is that what you're finding? A lot of young females, get uh, young girls getting more? 100%, yeah, definitely, yeah. I think there's been, there's quite a lot of projects actually locally, um, you know, that, that predominantly work with young women for football. Mm. Um, so, um, you know, and there's lots of inspiration as well out there. You know, there, there's a, there's a, a community councillor called Eva Pond. I'm sure loads of people know who she is. Um, I think she's now got a very, very, very important job at the top of the sort of <laughs> um, FA, I guess. Um, and yeah, I think she's very much into sort of promoting uh, female football, like sport, female females in football. And I think she's been obviously a footballer herself, as well as a teacher. There's so many things I could sit here and list all the things she's been. <laughs> but she's definitely, I think at the time I met her, she was a head teacher, a... Um, a footballer, I mean, it's just the list is endless, and community councillor, and now she's the chair of the council, and yeah, she's uh, uh, a strong force. Wow. Um, but yeah, she's wow. Uh, definitely an inspiration in terms of like local young girls wanting to be footballers. 100%. Fantastic. Wow. I mean, um, question. Inspiration for young black women as well. Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, yeah. Um, question to both of you guys. Um, like, when you guys were young, um, have you ever had, like, you know, played football before? I mean, you know. I think everyone sort of like, you know, had a kick about when they were younger. I think you know, that's important, yeah. you know. Like, but yeah, football wasn't my <laughs> that wasn't my overall dream. That wasn't my uh, that wasn't my that wasn't my overall goal. I think I've just sort of seen the importance of, of you know creating something like a legacy. I think creating a legacy um, and adding value to my own community. I think that's important. Mm. I think there's been lots of people that have done that in previous generations. Harold Bent at the avenues, and they've gone on to create sort of lasting organisations. The forty years plus, fifty years plus, and I think you know that can have such a massive influence on grandparents, then th then your parents, then yourself, you know, and then your kids in the future. So I think anything that has a lasting legacy is really really important. 
Yeah, fantastic. I was, uh, I was, yeah, I was, I was a little bit of a baller, um, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I played until I was about eleven, twelve, and then uh, yeah, stopped playing after that. But my brother was really good. My, uh -huh. Yeah, he was really good. I, I kind of. Uh, Did your brother play for anyone? He played for Crystal Palace actually oh, wow, yeah. as, a, as a youth as a youth player, and uh, now he's a father, okay. and uh, he's got two two boys, my two nephews. Nice. And uh, yeah, the oldest of those nephews, Malachi, he's uh, he's a little baller. He's uh, yeah. just turned that's seven. That's son, brilliant. Oh, yeah. Wow. So yeah, shout out to to them, Malachi and Levi, and um, James and Nana. Shout out to yeah, my, that's the Kai Gamma family. Wonderful. That's so wonderful. Me, I would say, um, played uh, uh, football for the school, and then after that, I kind of, you know, wanted to go to uh, QPR. I think played a little bit, but I wasn't on that like that top level. I was just like, you know, playing for the like, you know, under 18s and that. And yeah, it was amazing. And then, yeah. so you're really good then. So you're, you're decent. But back then, what back position were you playing? Back then, I was playing like a uh, right wing uh, striker. You got speed, yeah. Speed, mm -hmm. but on the I think tw uh, like two thousand and seventeen, I think I uh, had I caused an injury on my uh, knee, and it was a uh, I, I think I did a, a, a level two ACL tear. Oh shoot! And uh, went to the hospital. They told me, um, yeah, if it was any more damage, I would my career as a football player would be over anyway. Wow! And I did six months of um, physio, which was very struggling. And um, but over the six months, uh, I kind of noticed that every time when you try and play and you try and you know force yourself to like you know think that you're the best you just gotta you know keep down and you know just think like just go step by step take it day by day yeah kind of exactly thing. i hear that i hear that that's a, a lesson for life there yeah it literally yeah, it's dropping some wisdom some jewels of some pearls of wisdom there. <laughs> i love it man literally but seriously every young people who wants to like you know be like a footballer you just gotta like you know Make sure you get the hard work done and um, push yourself in there, and um, and don't cause any injury as well. Cause that would uh, that would, I mean you can I mean, cause injury, but you just have yeah, to learn, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and practice, yeah. practice, practice. I think it's you also know, definitely. To sort of you know stay grounded and stay humble as well. Yeah, because you know the it, to be honest with you, to be a professional footballer at the very very top of the game, like mm. one percent get to the very top mm. so you know not everybody's going to get there but the thing is to um to use it as a, a opportunity to to test yourself to push yourself to be the best that yeah, you can be i've seen people that have gone from you know obviously playing football they may have got a, like a, a long-term injury they may not have been signed for whatever reason you know and they turn it around and they become coaches and they sort of inspire the next generation and i think those are the people that were sort of strongest because they can go through the disappointment and that heartbreak of not being successful themselves, but then literally flip it and, and help the next Absolutely. next cohort, the next generation to, yep. to sort yeah. of yeah, become successful. And I think those are the people that should sort of wear their badges of pride. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and that is not to say that some of you aren't going to make it, mm. you know, and, yeah. if, and if you have got that talent, remember that um, hard work beats talent yeah. when talent doesn't work hard. Oof, 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 oof. Remember that one. Remember Ooh, that one. a bit of a little saucy there, <laughs> man. We. That's a little Ooh. little nugget of wisdom there for you. Ooh, for I free. like that for no? free. Ooh. So, um, right, we're gonna move on to the next subject, and I think you guys know what subject is gonna be. I don't. So please tell me. <laughs> uh, so the next subject will be about the lovely grade listed two building Kendall House. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And um yeah, it's got a little bit of history. Uh as you know, um you'll see it in the news uh sometimes um Lengard has gone bust, of course, and um we're trying to tackle it uh, as much as we can. But uh I was thinking to ask you both um what what did you think about the building when you first came to the estate? 
Oh, wow. Uh, I, I don't mind going first. Um, I mean, any one of you guys. Yeah, no, Kinzel House is a, it's a wonderful building. I'd always passed it when I was going to Carnival over mm. the, the many years that I've been going to Carnival and uh, always just thought it was a, you know, nice looking building. It, I only remember it being white and blue. I don't remember it in its green state. Yeah. I don't remember that, that era. Same. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was just a, a nice looking building to me. And then uh, when I started working with Spid Theatre, mm. then I kind of got to know some of the residents a bit more. And, mm. and then I found out a lot more about the history of Kensal House, mm. how long it's been there, how influential and important it is with regards to the local area. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, as you said, Lengard, the, the builders have gone bust, which is putting, you know, the the estate's renovation, um, well, the renovation of Spid Theatre, firstly, yep. Yeah. Um, it's putting that in jeopardy um, and we kind of need that to kind of go, go in so that the council can kind of crack on with the rest of the estate. Yeah. And it's kind of like a, a chicken and egg situation, you know. Yeah, literally. You know, but uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate. But hopefully yeah. we can, as a community, pull together and uh, and save save Spid, Spid Theatre within Kensal House, you know, and, um, and get the the whole estate brought up to a really good standard mm. and just get the uh, rbkc to pull their finger out really you know yeah definitely 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 obviously you mentioned like really good standard but i think some of the, the stuff i've seen at kensal house you know that they're, they're not even meeting you know basic basic, basic expectations so yeah. i think mm. yeah definitely um yeah obviously i think for me I've mm. always admired the sort of the sunsets <laughs> over Kensal House and sort of yeah. the cemetery as I've been uh, walking to, walking past, um, you know. But I think in terms of, you know, for me the definition of community is is Kensal House. I think the the respect that the residents have for each other mm. um, as they endure what they what they're going through now is is yeah first class and it's not something I've uh, seen much of. But yeah, they should be all really proud. So, so yeah, I mean. I like I like what you guys said about it. Um, like it's got uh, amazing history, the community so well. Um, it's 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 an amazing building. Um, but for me, as I am also a resident of Kensal House, uh, I've lived there for like twenty three years. Um, I've I've known that it's changed a little bit and um since the refurb as well, it's kind of frustrating for me to like, you know, understand what's going on, what's been done, how long is it gonna be done. Um, but back then it was it was amazing. Mm. Like like literally if you if you were like in my generation, I would say, um like say oh five ish or oh six it was an amazing, amazing, amazing building. Like the playground was different. The um, the football place around the back is t totally different as well. Um, what else? Uh, the garden is the garden was basically the same anyway. But um, well, it, that was before it was tropical. Before they made the, the put up the trees and yeah, the, yeah. That was yeah before then, and because um, it was just a lawn there before, wasn't yeah, it? lawn. It was all like green grasses, and that's it. Yeah, but, but then, it looks a lot better now with the tropical stuff, though. Yeah, it kind of looks like Hawaii a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you know, a little yeah. bit like Hawaii it's or beautiful. um or what, what was that uh, in America when they had those little the palm trees? Yeah, yeah those yeah. one. I think it's L.A. Right? Yeah, L.A. Yeah. L.A. Cool vibes. And yeah. 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 Oh man. <laughs> But now, and uh, now uh, they're doing the refurb. Now it just looks uh, abandoned, really. Well, and I mean, yeah, it's a work in progress, you know, and we we hope. Site and it's not going to be like that forever. So. Yeah, no. but how long? Though that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, with the, with Lengard going bust, it really does kind of throw everything up in the air. Mm, exactly, yeah. and the residents are not too happy about it. They want to know what's going on. Like I said, what's been done, and you know, they just want to, you know everything done and of course be, so they can have a peaceful you know of course yeah life, absolutely so in terms of the local area and you ryan mm -hmm. what uh, yeah. um what does the future have in store for you in the local area yeah please tell us that man um, uh, i wouldn't be able to answer that at all <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, take every day as it comes and yeah yeah definitely whatever happens i'll definitely be uh 
you know, obviously I think always involved in, in, in the local community. You know, I love my local community. I love um, uh, Golden Road and, and, and Ladbroke Grove and all the surrounding sort of neighbourhoods. Mm. All the way up to Kensal Rise and Kensal Green. So, yeah. Um, I don't even want, I wouldn't even want to know what the future holds. I think, well. yeah, definitely just... Um, just yeah. be there to, to be journey, in the present. To journey to yeah. be in the present, and yeah, see see what happens. But yeah, definitely, I think I'm hoping for some, uh, yeah, not just local change, but mm. know, UK wide change. Possibly mm. a change in government <laughs> would be a good place to start. Yeah, um, mm. you know, and I think um, I think there's so many things going on right now. You know, in terms of like the migrants and um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's UK what like there's there's big things happening, and I think um, yeah, there's a lot to there's a lot to feel passionate about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think obviously if you want to make a change, I think start with your, your local community and yeah. Yeah. Really good point. Yeah. I mean, the local community it's 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 grown quickly, and um, as you said, uh, there's a Spit Theatre, there's also Kamani Arts, but there's also other communities around the local area. Um, there is one uh, one community that I've been to. Um, I don't know what it's called, but kind of kind of forgot. But um, it's right uh, over where you go, where the twenty three bus goes to, uh, to near Trellick Tower. Yeah, near Trellick Tower. Yeah, and uh, there's this one community, and it's full of vibes and dancing, um, performing arts, um, and. If I can find it, and if I say it in the next uh, episode as well, I will shout them out. Are they actually they're based in the basement of uh, Trellick Tower? Uh, no, not really. Oh, okay. uh, but like they're like a few minutes away, like about 10, 10 minutes. Away. Oh, okay, Paddington okay. Arts? Yeah, Paddington Arts is a good. Place oh yeah, Paddington. Paddington Arts. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Paddington, Paddington Arts. Arts is a good place to shout. To shout out. I think Paddington Arts have been doing. Yeah, like, literally. Yeah. I think longer than most of us have been alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah literally. actually. I want to, sorry, I wanted to mention sorry. as well. I mentioned them earlier, but um, I think it's just a, a general shout out to, to Day 20 as well. I think people like Deborah and Fiona, who I've known for many years, you know, continue to sort of advocate for, you know, the rights of, of um, Latimer and Labra Grove and, and North Kensington residents. And I think the work they've done together over um, COVID supporting residents as well was, was fantastic. It was huge. Know, big mm. partnerships with like the Felix project and getting care packs out very much similar to sort of the work that happens in Queen's Park and across other areas of Westminster but yeah they should be very proud I think they've done fantastic fantastic work awesome big up Bay 20 yeah man big up to them man you see this is what community this is what community uh, goes uh, on about and um, yeah and I like that quick um so, uh, on a final uh, subject as well, uh, just a final bit is is that um, we go back to Sebastiano's uh, lemonade. Yep. Um, my f- uh, first question is, uh, what was your uh, relationship with when with him when you first uh, started and met or him? I guess uh, so. With regards to Sebastiano and that, with regards to the lemonade. Yep. So we know there's a young person that we know. Um, that we've been working with yep. called Sebastiano, who's got Sebastiano's lemonade, and it is fantastic. You know, yes. we've mentioned it; it's very tasty. Yes. Uh, do you, would you like to just say a little bit about Sebastiano's lemonade and what yeah. and what you're doing with regards to that as well? Uh, so I think, yeah, um, not very much, not 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 greatly involved, you know. But I think just a sort of basically a fan of the product, and I think it's it got potential to be really, really big. Um, and I think it's really just obviously like I've seen it in places like Chili's I mentioned in Portobello um, and Ackland Village and you know it's just it's just a product that's around but I think because it's local mm. um, and because I because sort of it's supporting sort of youth enterprise I just think it's, it's, it's something to believe in you know I think you just want to see local people do good and I think that's what's important you know I'd much rather buy lemonade from a local resident than sort of you know a big chain yeah. you know or it's Wherever, wherever you get your lemonade from. Yeah, yeah interesting. Definitely, and definitely w- Sebastiano's lemonade over M and S's. Absolutely. And absolutely. what's really interesting is he sells it from in front of Kensal House, does, which yeah. Yeah. and he's across the road from Innocent Innocent, innocent, innocent Drinks, drinks yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like from, from what I know, Innocent Innocent Smoothies have had quite a similar journey. Mm. Know, I think they. I think I'm not 100 sure. We might have to check this, but um, you know, I think they were started off by two brothers, and they were sort of local, and they'd done the sort of similar thing. I think. Someone told me that at one point they were sort of doing house-to-house deliveries with their 
uh, in this movie. So I think they've chosen to be based in that local community, where is obviously where their product started. So I think respect to them. You know, obviously they've grown huge, and I think hopefully we wish the same for Sebastian. I'm sure he'll be his lemonade will be all over the country soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah man, definitely. It's Absolutely. got that much potential, but I think the fact that people just like genuinely love the product, it's not just sort of your average lemonade. You know, I think the fact that it's you know incorporates like really really important like healthy ingredients like CMOS so lemonade and CMOS you know and they're really popular with the <laughs> Caribbean and West Indian communities but yeah. I think also mm. the scotch bonnets like when people hear you know scotch bonnets in, in lemonade like yeah. crazy and then they try and they're like Oof, yeah it absolutely it's the one so it's definitely that drink is 100% slapping right now and it's the it's the it's the it's the vibe, and I think we're best to try it than carnival. Absolutely. You know? Even if you end up bringing your own rum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is more probably what I'm gonna do. Oh, what we're gonna do, I think. Definitely, man. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah, look up Spastiano's lemonade at um, carnival, or you know, this will probably get air, air, air after afterwards. Yeah, yeah, but beyond carnival, yeah, beyond yeah, beyond check carnival, it out go online. Go to the house and check it out and order it and look at different places like the Grinder Coffee Shop and. Chilies and Portobello, and yeah, it's just there. I think the Tabernacle as well are now going to be stocking it. Oh, that's, that's amazing! Oh, you nice. know, Tabernacle is a fantastic like, venue in, in, in Portobello, and I think like the fact that they have like shows and they're so heavily involved in stuff like the carnival. Yeah, sort of, that's like, the headquarters the of, of carnival, yeah. isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah it is, yeah. So, um, you know, um, the team there, um, Daniel and the, and the rest of the team there, they're they tried the lemonade, I think, a couple of weeks ago, and they were like, we want to stock it. And Bang, yeah, look at that. Wow. So, um, yeah, there's, there'll be nowhere soon that you won't see Sebastiano's lemonade. But amazing. Try it when you do see it. Amazing. Mm. Um, that's amazing. What a journey that has been for you and uh, Sebastiano. Um, what made you help um, Sebastiano, you know, when he asked you? So I think it's just a, a collaborative thing. I think like, the entire sort of team and all the volunteers and everyone that's sort of involved in, in Spitbit and Kensal House and everyone that's sort of involved in local in the local community, whether it just means walking ac across the bridge to Sainsbury's, you know, and, 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 and doing your weekly shopping. I think everyone has got behind this product because it's literally like on his door it's on the doorstep, you know. Yeah. It, it's mm. a local resident. Why would you not want to support someone Absolutely. Uh, someone Absolutely. locally? So I think I'm just as passionate about this product as, as the next person. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, yeah, I think it also helps the fact that Sebastiano's obviously got that mindset of a, a, a young businessman and like wants to be successful. Mm. And obviously he's, he's, he's worked really hard to produce business plans and risk assessments and all the important sort of stuff that he needs to take this forward. Yeah, but definitely. It's not a, it's not a difficult product to get behind. So I think even if he was on sort of dra Dragon's Den, he'd probably have... <laughs> Oh. right now so yeah absolutely yeah absolutely literally yeah. but you just want to see overall you just want to see uh, you know your 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 neighborhood and and your 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 neighbors do well so i think yeah. you know, regardless of who that person is if your neighbor has got a business why not support them absolutely you know? yeah I agree. and uh, i go on to my final question for the both of you um um what is your favorite flavor of the lemonade oh uh, for me definitely i've already said it and i'm quite surprised at myself because if you sort of asked me two or three months ago about lemonade i would have just said yeah sort of normal fizzy lemonade or maybe a bit with a bit of honey you know i would never have mm. ever thought i'd be drinking lemonade with scotch bonnet <laughs> but um yeah but it is I'm, the I'm one drinking it yeah you know, i can confirm i'm drinking it probably every day <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah probably a liter a day at the moment <laughs> so um you know god knows what effect that's having on my body but i feel mm. good and yeah, I'm sure, like, especially even with the CMOS stuff, you know, like anything with CMOS, obviously you're getting your sort of 94 vitamin mineral essentials every day. Yeah. So, yeah, I think um, anything like that. But the fact that it's nice, it's refreshing, obviously, yeah. you know, temperatures are finally hitting 25 degrees plus in London. So that's mm. obviously our summer. Um, so I think anything like that, it's, it's a bit of ice, you know, it's, it's cool and it's refreshing. But I think, yeah, for me, the Scotch bonnet, 100%. Yeah. Uh, it takes I've a year of getting used, used to, but once you... Uh, yeah, once you're over the initial shock of, 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 of the heat, yeah. Yeah, no, I've got to agree with you. That sensation, it, the, the kick that you get out of that, <laughs> it feels like you're drinking, it feels like you're drinking like some really strong alcohol. Yeah. You know, because the yeah. kick is so, 
It's so hard, but yeah, mm. that's my yeah, favorite. And obviously, it's not having the adverse effects and, and they're getting no over adverse alcohol. effects. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So but like you're getting your your head blown off with something really hot. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and awesomely healthy. good for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. mm. My uh, my favorite is the, you know, you're gonna call me basic, but flip it. Um, lemon and ginger a little bit, but I've tried the little chili one. First hit, it creased my throat and oh my god i was choking literally. Oh, but it was good it was good it was all good yeah exactly but it's all good it's all good i like it big up to sebastian's lemonade and hopefully you guys can go there and pick up a bottle for how much is it on the for yeah. a bottle i don't, I don't want to butcher his prices but check out some yeah. yeah. look for it check out yeah Sebastian's yeah lemonade, you know and i think Potentially, obviously, as we move into the winter as well, you know, autumn, yeah. winter, mm. the benefits, the health benefits. And mm. you know, I'm just confident that everyone in Labra Grove and Portobello is going to have fantastic immune systems hey. just off the back of Sebastiano's Lemonade. So Absolutely. Stay Absolutely. healthy, stay safe, um, you know, yeah. All right. So I guess that brings us to the to the end. Yeah, the, of what, course. Of, uh, of the episode. So, yeah, yeah, well done. Well done for getting... Well done. Well done, well done everybody. Well yeah, done. Well, uh, I just want to say a uh, special thanks to Ryan for coming over Absolute and, uh, you know, giving up his time to do the episode. And then also, um, I want to give a very, very special, very thanks to my partner, Kai Gamma. No um, problem. No problem at all. He's amazing at my, uh, doing the episode as well. And um, guys... Uh, make sure to like you know subscribe and uh, share like the uh, episode as well and um, yeah you'll be hearing from me for the next uh, let's say next week I think yeah yeah or, or a fortnight or a fortnight possibly, possibly. Yeah. we'll see Who but, uh, but check out KJ Podcast on YouTube and Spotify yes. and Apple Music as well isn't it yes Apple okay. Music as Excellent. well Excellent. Uh, all right. Yeah. And big up yourself as well, Christian. Well done for today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, we'll catch you all very soon. Definitely, man. Peace. Peace.